Hi, I'm Ashish Beatty from Ann Arbor, Michigan. And today we're going to demonstrate an autocart procedure for the hip in the situation of cam delamination lesions. These are cartilage defects that we encounter not infrequently in the setting of hip impingement surgery. These procedures have been challenging given that these are often poorly shouldered lesions that are difficult to fill and can often lead to progressive degenerative disease in the hip. Autocart has given us the advantage of a single stage procedure using the patient's own viable chondrocytes combined with biocartilage and ACP to reliably fill these lesions and treat them in a single setting. With that, let's go to the procedure. So here, as you can see, we have our left hip specimen. Uh, again, setup is typical for a femoral acetabular impingement case. Um, again, the most typical portals to review here, this is our standard anterolateral portal placed here. This is our mid-anterior portal placed here. It's often useful for these surgeries, either for anchor placement or for management of cartilage defects or both, to consider placing what you see here, which is a distal anterolateral portal. This allows for views from both the mid-anterior and anterolateral portal and instrumentation from both the distal anterolateral and the mid-anterior portal. So what's nice here is the setup and management for this procedure is all routine, the same things that we would do for routine management of, of a hip impingement case. So we'll take a look here. We've set up this case here just a bit for the sake of efficiency to show that we've already managed our rim lesion and our area of focal retroversion and impingement. And of course, a part of that is managing an associated labral tear. You can see here that's been nicely refixed uh, with three uh, 1.8 millimeter fiber tack anchors that have nicely restored the suction seal and refixed the labrum. Of course, what's typical and challenging with the procedure is this lesion here. And you can see, we see this not infrequently in the setting of FAI, which is this area of significant grade four cam delamination. In its earliest form, we sometimes see that as a wave sign where there's debonding, but it's not an unstable flap. That then progresses to become an unstable flap and then oftentimes can become fully exposed bone. For the sake of this, this demonstration, you can see here, we have a full patch of, of exposed bone. Management of this, at least for me, has always been problematic with this surgery. It's not easy to microfracture. You can see both because of the angle, but even biologically, we have one margin that's well shouldered, but the entire chondrolabral junction is not well marginated. So lesion fill becomes an issue. While we've sometimes addressed this with chondral drilling in this location, again, the angles and the fill can be challenging. So having some approach that could be cell-based to fill this lesion, but not be a two-stage approach in which we'd have to come back for an additional arthroscopy could be very favorable for the patient, and hence the application of autocart in this setting. Well, where can we obtain the potential graft for that autocart? As you can see here, the cam delamination flap itself could be a source of that. You can introduce your shaver. Again, depending on the version of the acetabulum, you might find the angle of approach to that cam delamination to be easier either from your mid-anterior portal or approached a little bit more perpendicular, as you can see here, from a distal anterolateral portal. Sometimes the cam delamination lesion itself and harvesting that may provide you sufficient tissue and cartilage to achieve that outcome. But one thing that I have found is in the setting of FAI, perhaps one of the most robust sources of cartilage is in fact the cam lesion itself. And so as you can see here, it's not uncommon in the setting of FAI for the cartilage to cover the cam lesion well distal to the physeal scar. So my typical workflow would be just as is done here, manage the central compartment pathology by repairing the labrum, preparing the lesion here to, to remove the calcified cartilage layer, expose bone, and then proceed to the femoral side where I can obtain cartilage tissue using the graft net harvester. So as you can see here, after we've managed the central compartment, fixing the labrum and addressing any other pathology, here we would simulate now going to the peripheral compartment. Whether you're using an, a shaver or in this case, for example, a round burr, you can actually harvest the cartilage material that's directly over your cam lesion I'll often use the burr like this to set a proximal margin. That kind of helps us to define the physeal scar. And then everything that's distal to the physeal scar here becomes harvestable cartilage that we can actually use containing viable chondrocytes that we can then deliver back into our area of cam delamination. 
it's important to set that physeal margin proximally so you know uh, pre preservation of the articular surface has been maintained. But all of this lesion distally, as you work in the peripheral compartment, becomes a source of healthy cartilage tissue and has been used routinely and been demonstrated by Travis Mack and others as containing viable chondrocytes, which then can be delivered in conjunction with your biocartilage and ACP to fill the CAM delamination lesion on the acetabular side. I'm often careful here, if I'm doing this with the burr, to initially take just this cartilage layer, so all of that is being harvested in the graft net, and I can come back and then take more of an aggressive margin, as you can see here, to actually then perform our margin of our bony resection. So this becomes a very robust source of cartilage if you don't feel like the actual cam delamination flap itself is a sufficient source for you. So everything that you need for your hip autocart procedure you can see here on the back table. The left side is your TUI needle, uh, a few points that are helpful. This is designed, customized for the hip. You can see it's longer. One of the things I really like about it also is the customized tip that has this paddle type configuration that allows you to use it um, like a freer where you deliver your uh, biologic material and then can use the tip to customize and contour it into your defect. This is particularly useful in an acetabulum uh, in an area of cam delamination. To the right of that, you see the plunger. As we'll show shortly, it's helpful to load the needle and then have the plunger just used to deliver material from the tip of the device. Just to the right of that is the suction swab. Um, I use this and like it a lot for hip autocart. Why? It's difficult to dry the lesion arthroscopically. Um, the suction swab can be delivered through one of your portals, and then the adapter just hooks up to suction and dries the area before you apply your autocart and then seal it. To the right of that is our biocartilage, and as you can see, graft net collected material in containing the chondrocytes, and to the right of that, our ACP. Just uh, above that is our device to help facilitate the mixing of these materials. This allows for cellular material that's viable from the graft net, collected with the extender in biocartilage, which contains healthy cartilage matrix, and to the right, the ACP, which of course contains all the healthy growth factors and cytokines. Uh, that all gets mixed. Uh, an important point is that we typically recommend a one-to-one -one ratio between the graft net material and the biocartilage to 0.8 of the ACP. Just to the right of that is what you'll need at the end of the procedure, which is to seal over your defect. And this is the thrombinator. You can see that that's already been mixed here. And then you have your uh, two syringes with the dual lumen syringe tip that allows you to mix and then deliver that from the tip. Um, one trick here, of course, is to minimize the amount of that delivered so that you really keep the thrombinator material just over your lesion to minimize the flow onto the adjacent tissue. So step one is to isolate our material from the graft net. You can simply twist this off here at the interface. As I pull that off, you can see the trap that rests underneath. And I'm going to gently pull that out to show all of that viable material of cartilage that's been collected for us to add to our auto cart. This will drop into our specimen cup, which we'll then add in later, combining with our ACP and our biocartilage. We've been deliberate here during our harvest to really keep this to cartilage and not bone. Next, we're ready for our biocartilage. As you can see here, we have preloaded that into our syringe. This syringe is convenient to allow us for mixing by attachment to our funnel top, which will allow us to bring together the graft net cartilage material as well as ACP. It also has a convenient device here that allows us to both mix and use as a conventional syringe. So step one here is we'll remove the cap. That will then allow us to attach the funnel top, which press fits on here. At this step, we'll add about a one-to-one -one proportion of our cartilage material. You can see you can simply use a forceps or something to deliver that right in. We'll add a few drops here of the ACP. So as you can see here, we're continuing to mix, and we can get this very nice homogeneous consistency, bringing the biocartilage, the graft net collection, and the ACP together. Once it's nice and homogeneous this way, we're now ready to go ahead and load that into our TUI needle and be prepared for delivery. 
the adapter can go back on the syringe to facilitate that for us. At this step, we take off the more distal tip, and that will allow us to deliver this in to the TUI needle here. So you can see here, we now have our mixed slurry attached to our TUI needle. One pearl for me is to advance this material on your back table here so that it's effectively loaded almost to the tip. Uh, this avoids having to push while you're in the joint and avoids releasing too much material, which then can be a challenge to clear when you're in the joint. So here I'm just loading that, clearing the chamber of air, and bringing that material right towards the tip of the needle. I'm doing that slowly and carefully so that we're fully, hopefully, loaded here for, for success. Now with all of that material delivered, we can use the plunger, move most of that material right towards the tip. You can see that gradually showing itself right there at the aperture of the TUI needle. That's about the way I want to bring it into the joint for delivery into the area of the lesion. Okay, so now we're getting to the conclusion portion of our procedure, which is being able to deliver our hip autocart to fill this lesion, uh, this area of cam delamination. Just showing you here what we've set up. This is on the 70 degree view. Remember, at this point, your labor repair, rim, and cam decompression would be complete. You've mixed the material on the back table, and now you're ready for, for delivery prior to capsular closure. So this is showing the conventional 70-degree view, but I do want to feature here this switch to the 30-degree, and then now this pano view. You can see this 45-degree view gives you a much broader appreciation for the deformity and also uh, gives you an appreciation of the entire cam delamination lesion. What are some of the things that are important before delivering? Drying the area. You have, as I showed earlier, this nice suction swab tool here. You can see this can be delivered from your DALA portal. We can then bring this in and gradually move it right over the area of the lesion to assure that that whole area is dry before we come in and deliver our autocart. And so with all of that dried and this reasonably good view, we're now in a good position to go ahead and bring in our TUI needle and deliver the autocart. Now you can see here after drying, we can go ahead now and introduce our TUI needle. The angle um, of delivery can either be your distal anterolateral portal or your mid-anterior portal, or even your proximal anterolateral portal. It really just depends upon the location of your cam delamination. I have generally found that one of the better portals for delivery is the DALA, because it gives me this trajectory, as you can see here, where I can work relatively perpendicular to the cam lesion and then use this paddle just like a freer to nicely contour into the lesion. So with that in place, I'll usually start at one corner and work to the other. So we'll now gradually start to deliver our autocart material. Just gradual advancement of that plunger, as you can see there, helps us to deliver that material nicely. And we'll just gradually work our way over here. And we just work and fill that lesion. We can do some touch up with the probe and with the tip of the needle. But you can see here, we've got fairly nice fill and fairly good contour. And this was done nicely where, again, you can see we're not overfilling. We just want to bring that right up to the margins of, the, of the, the defect. So now, as you can see, with our autocart material nicely delivered into the cam delamination uh, lesion, we're now just prepared to seal over the top. And here's our thrombinator needle that we've delivered from the DALA. You can see I'm just gently delivering that material. So it's just covering over the lesion, but not delivering too much to result in adherence to the adjacent tissue. So you can see that subtle change in color as that is just coming over the top of the lesion. And that should seal it over just as we would want. Um, what's also nice here, remember, is currently as we're delivering this, we're in traction. We're, but we're just about after this step. Uh, we're going to remove the traction after this sets, which will further compress and contour this material into our defect acting like a template to nicely fill that lesion. And then we'll be prepared for our capsular closure of our inner portal capsulotomy and completing the procedure. And that concludes our case. Um, I like this approach very much because cam delamination and these lesions in the past have been unsolved for me. And my approach was to simply leave them untreated. But this has given me a nice single stage approach that has viable cartilage from the patient that I can do at the same setting and my hope is that this contributes to the joint preservation and longevity for the future.